So far we've looked at three different fates for glucose 6-phosphate. So it can be converted back into glucose inside the liver and other specialized cells and the glucose can be converted into glucose 6-phosphate as well. It can be converted into glycogen glycogen and we looked at that as well and it can be converted back to glucose 6-phosphate. We also looked at glycolysis so we, want, we can convert it into pyruvate pyruvate and then that through mediary pathways can be converted back into glucose 6-phosphate. There's one other pathway that we haven't mentioned and it's called the pentose phosphate shunt. So pentose phosphate shunt or sometimes it's called the pentose phosphate shuttle but in this case we're turning glucose 6-phosphate into rubulose 5-phosphate and then further processing into rubulose and into uh, nucleic acids and reducing agents such as NADH. So let's explore a little bit more of this pentose phosphate shunt. So what we have here is um, we got the formation of glucose 6-phosphate and then there's an enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase which can convert the glucose 6-phosphate into ribulose 5-phosphate. Now what we see here is that it can either be converted back into a downstream glycolytic uh, or glycolysis uh, substrate or it can be shunted all the way over to a nucleotide. However, the reaction with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is an irreversible reaction, so you can't go back to glucose 6-phosphate from the ribulose 5-phosphate. In this process, you create NADPH. And this is actually important. We're going to see that it's, it's actually more than just one NADPH that's formed. And it's important because uh, NADPH is a reducing molecule, and so if you have a lot of oxidative stress, this is important to make and that's one of the primary purposes of the pentose phosphate shunt in red blood cells. So what are the control mechanisms? So the control mechanism is is there a lot of NADP available and is there a lot of glucose 6-phosphate available and if those two things are true typically we're going to go down through the glucose I mean the pentose phosphate pathway. Now I'm just going to show you this is a very simplified version of the uh, of the pathway because this is a little bit more accurate right here and um, what we what we have is uh, from glucose 6-phosphate you go to 6-phosphoglucona 1,5-lactones to 6-phosphogluconate then finally to ri ribulose 5-phosphate in that process you've created two NADPH molecules and then if you want to go back into a downstream uh, glycolysis substrate, the, the process is pretty long as well. But as far as um, what we studied in lecture, this simplified version should be more than sh sufficient. And I think the main purpose is that we understand, uh, first of all, what enzyme is it, what the major enzyme involved is, what, and what the purpose is. So we want to create reducing equivalents and or nucleotides. So why exactly would we want to create more NADPH other than it, because in, in, let's say for example in red blood cells, NADPH cannot be used to donate electrons to the carboxylic acid cycle or the Krebs cycle because red blood cells don't have a mitochondria. So why would they want reducing equivalents? And the answer to that is because they undergo a lot of oxidative stress. So um, they use a reduction of oxidize. It's used to reduce uh, glutathione. But in other cells it's still important because it's, a, it's an important for the synthesis of uh, nucleotides, neurotransmitters, cholesterols, and fatty acids. So NADPH is needed in a lot of different pathways. And down here you can see which tissues are using the, the pentose phosphate shunt and for exactly what purpose they're using it. And we're going to focus on the red blood cells for the maintenance of reduce uh, as a reducing agent. So in all the tissues and all, uh, more specifically in the red blood cells because they lack mitochondria uh, we have a problem with superoxide so this is a uh, this is O2 minus so it's got an extra 
electron. So it's got this radical electron. So a radical electron is one electron by itself. And this particular uh, electron, especially in oxygen, is going to cause a lot of damage inside the cell if it's not dealt with. So it can be acted on by superoxide dismutase. Superoxide dismutase. I'm just going to put dis, dis M. And it will be converted into hydrogen peroxide. Now hydrogen peroxide in a lot of cells is handled by catalase. In particular, the red blood cells use a molecule, uh, enzyme called glutathione peroxidase. So you got the H2O2 and glutathione peroxidase. We're just going to put glutathione perox. It's going to act on the uh, peroxide and turn it into H2O and some type of alcohol. So you got ROH. And in the process of doing that, it takes a reduced glutathione, glutathione, so it's in a reduced state, and it converts it into a glutathione in the oxidized state. Then, to get it back into the reduced state, you use glutathione reductase, glutathione reductase, and this isn't the important part. The enzyme's not the, well, you, the enzyme's important, but the important part is that you take NADPH, or I'm sorry, NADH, and you convert it into NAD plus. And so you need reducing equivalents of NADH created by the pentose phosphate shunt in order to get rid of these superoxides. So in summary, the pentose phosphate shunt, PPS is what I'm going to abbreviate it as, is used primarily for creating reducing uh, equivalents. Reducing equivalents. I'm going to put EQ. And it's also used for um, nucleotide synthesis. And then several other things such as cholesterol synthesis and further down the road to steroid synthesis. But it can also be reverted back into uh, downstream uh, glycolysis substrates. So we can put it back into glycol uh, glycolysis.